don't have a plan on the NASDAQ of what my upside and downside targets are, I might as well not trade. So that's time that I'm putting in every day to know that I'm ready to trade. And then outside of that, I have time set for studying all the different things that go on in the market, knowing why, you know, bonds might peak before stocks and commodities before a turnaround or why does the market relationship to the dollar sometimes correlate, sometimes doesn't, things like that. So I'm spending time on the things I know I need to do before I trade. And then I'm spending time on the things outside of that, that just are kind of like market knowledge that interests me. So specifically with the dark pools, this was, a, this is a great time to be doing this one because we had OPEX on Friday and, uh, OPEX means lots of dark pool, lots of repositioning. So if everyone is has downloaded this document that you can use to help uh, you know, filter through the dark pools, I also put these steps in the council room so you can refer back to them. This webinar will be recorded. You can refer back to this. But basically, you would download the file, um, and you'll probably get a box in this area that says you'd need to enable editing. And then the one other thing that you would need to do, this file includes a macro, which uh, because you've downloaded it from the internet, uh, you would need to turn off the macro or trust the file. And uh, you know you, you know where to find me. I'm not trying to do anything funky on your computer. So uh, the way that you would trust the document would be once you've downloaded it, find it, uh, right click, and then you probably have a, a box right here. Uh, or I, yeah, I think it would be right there. We just say trust, trust the document. And again, along the way, if you guys have questions, you can put them in the chat. But uh, yeah, so you'd be trusting the document and then you would be ready to use it. And this is what it would look like. So you would jump over to the black box website and this is the, uh, the alert stream here. Uh, this is the way I set it up. This is what I like to see during the day. Uh, it doesn't matter what alerts you like to catch during the day, as long as you have these two checked because that's what we're going to be analyzing here and then you just hit your download um, and you can open up the file so this is just the raw data uh, from black box and so before I was freaking adding rows and putting filters and adding formulas across the top because I wanted you know go through the tickers that I like to trade uh, but it's it was just I was doing the same thing every day and time time more time so uh i created this thing so the way that you would use it is you jump over to the raw the first thing once you got it all set up ready to use jump over to the raw data tab and just delete all that and i do this each day uh and then jump over to the raw data thinking 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 don't blow it now computer all right and then uh grab everything on the raw data tab and then just jump back over to the organizer drop it in and then you would just click this button right here once it's thinking 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 a lot of data all right basically at this point it would be ready to use um All right, so the main tab that I use is gonna be this individual ticker view uh, and just dropping in the tickers to this box. So at this point, uh, you know, there's kind of a lot of different ways that you could trade, you could use this info. Because I'm on voice in the Roadhouse and we have people watching all kinds of different stuff, I personally am building out a spreadsheet that looks like this separately. Uh, so I have this spreadsheet going so that I'm basically taking it information from over here and dropping it over here at the end of each day so that when I'm, while I'm on voice in the roadhouse, if someone says, oh, hey, what do you think about Meta? Uh, you know, I've been watching Meta a little bit less, but I could say, all right, well, you got 12.9% uh, average 30-day volume sitting at 281, something to be aware of. So... Uh, so yeah, each day I'm just loading this, you know, this is separate. I didn't put this in the, the council room. You can track it however, you know, works for you. Um, but so each day I'm just going through and in this 
yellow box. I'm just, okay, bam, there's AMD. And this is where they hit it. This is how, you know, the, the, the price level and the percent. So uh, I have, this is this yellow box is where you drop in tickers. I have this one orange highlighted because it's really just catching the first, uh, first few that hit. So for example, if you were like, you know, if you wanted to filter and track uh, for this like 12120, uh, then you would just want to make sure that you change this price isn't going to change in this box. So if you're copying it somewhere else, you just want to make sure you had that. Be, you were aware of that. Um, but otherwise, yeah, this so this is kind of what I have going for me. And then I will, you know, I'll go through all the tickers that I like to trade or that I know people out in the room will like to trade. And this is just a good time to be aware of using this because of how much dark pool there was on Friday being OPEX. So you can see this is this is rare that Apple, Amazon, they would have these crazy lines. Um, so the other the so I go through all those tickers that I like to track and fill in my other sheet. And then the other thing that I do is I have this tab sorted by highest percent of 30 day volume to lowest. And then what I do is I just kind of start scrolling through here until I see things that I recognize because there's a lot of weird tickers that I really don't care about what SUP N is or V O N V like you know and the fact that they have such ridiculous high volume that could be you know I'll, I'll ask Sunny is this a buyout or is this some kind of activist or is this activist chatter or whatever um, but then I start going through and I start looking for things that I see the people putting in the room or uh, you know. And then so if something like TGTX, I know uh, it's it's this bio that's been having a massive run and that's a pretty big dark pool there. So um, I, I don't use the, the, I jump over to this other tab and check for the actual percent of 30 day. But here, this tab, I'm just using scrolling through, seeing for things that are interesting um, or that look like tickers that are familiar to me. Wells Fargo. Let's see what's going on with Wells Fargo. Oops, that's not how you spell Wells Fargo. So, so while, while you're doing this, uh, Stefan has a question. Um, so when you do this, okay, how are you using it to, to, to you know, kind of execute trades and put on? I, and, um, I'll let you answer the question, but I know for me, when we identify, <clears throat> you know, dark pools, which ultimately are just areas of interest in a lot of ways, you kind of use it to figure out to where if you're in a red day and and your ticker, this ticker that you're trading, it, it's on a bleeder and it's bleeding down. Some of these heavier dark pools are areas that, that you would look to get some type of support, some type of bounce, something within there. So and the way I would use something like this is on on that on a downdraft, if we are getting that downward pressure. Be like okay so apple lost this apple lost this so maybe apple down around this 18250 somewhere in through here what wherever that that big dark pool is we could potentially get a bounce okay then for me knowing what the level is as far as the dark pool understanding the flow to where if we are getting a bleeder coming through seeing how is the apple flow reacting as it approaches the dark pool are we getting more puts accelerating to plow through to the downside? Are we getting puts coming in on the bid to where shorts are kind of covering out a little bit? Or is there spec flow starting to come in, in and around these areas of interest? So when, when the question comes, that's great, but how do you use it? For me, that's how I'm kind of approaching it. If, if I'm in a trade like, let's say, let's use Apple as the example, and and I'm like, hey, okay, so Apple down around here, Stockington would chime in and be like, hey, you you have a dark pool sitting right in through here. It's an area of interest. You also have a couple above, you know, that that could that could be somewhat problematic in offering a pause for any type of a bounce to the upside. So it all goes back to probabilities and understanding where the kind of speed bumps or roadblocks or you know pits full of alligators may be lying when you're trying to figure out, okay, do I want to take profit here as we're approaching this? Do I want to go ahead and, and move out of this trade completely because it blew through to the downside? It's like these these are questions that, that you have to be actionable with and understanding the data that you have in front of you 
but it all goes back to probability. Stop, do you want to take a, a swing at answering the question? Yeah, yeah, no, that's all good stuff. 100% agree. Um, but yeah, I'll, we can jump into some specific examples of what I've put on the, the watch list very recently and uh, kind of how I watch and use these lines. Moderna was a nice one from this past week, and it caught my eye first. Uh, you know, one of the things that I focus on is daily inside bars, so I'll wait to get into that. We talked about the dark pool first, but uh, Moderna had a daily inside bar, and then I saw, I was like, oh, well, I guess I might, have, might as well check that out, and then I saw it got pretty decent size for this dark pool the other day, um, and I believe, let's see this one, I guess, so this is where I would jump back over to, uh, where, where did I put Moderna on there? Moderna. So that was on, I, I was focusing on this one from the 14th. That came in at 126.05. So if we jump over to Moderna, and well, let's get rid of all that. Uh, let's see, so 126.05. And I'll just kind of show because this is definitely one that took a little bit of a learning curve on um, how to trade it and use these dark pools. Uh, so this is the price action from the day that that the, the next day, basically. So the uh, if we jump back over to black box came in on after the close on June 14th, 126.05. And I like that they hit it multiple times with some size. So the next morning I was watching Moderna and this is kind of one that it's like, so here's the dark pool line. Here's the price action for the per first, what is that almost two hour or hour of the day. Um, and so one of the things is like, when you, uh, I, I make sure to give extra time around, especially a really large dark pool because if you're, you know, if you're newer, if you're, if you're antsy at the beginning of the day and you just are like itching to get into a trade, it's like, you could see this and be like, oh, dang, they didn't break it. They didn't break it. They didn't break it. I'm going to try short when really uh, the other thing I'm looking for is uh, chart patterns. I want to see setups playing out. I want to see, uh, you know, what the price action is going to do. And we saw on this day a nice inverse head and shoulders right up against the dark pool, popped it, and then we saw this flag build out here as well. Uh, so it's like, okay, I have a dark pool from black box, I have these patterns that I'm looking for when the charts start to build out, and I gave it enough time to bounce around this area before giving me a clear signal. Um, so that's kind of like how I would use it, but definitely, you know, the the learning curve on this one is giving it enough time to bounce around the dark pool so that you're really clear on on which way it's going to go. Um, so that was an example of a you know a bullish setup on Moderna. Um, the other one over the past couple of weeks was Snow. Um, that was from the week before, and uh, let's see, they had the yeah, I think it was this dark pool here um, from the week before, let's see, uh, that I had a watch list day where, yeah, I think it was this 174.31, and it happened to be this uh, day uh, where the market had, had a big red day. Um, so it, it lined up, let me see where that one came in. Uh, yeah, right here, it was this day. Um, so dark pool came in, 174.31, 81. I had it on the watch list for this day for snow, and you could see how it reacted for that day off the open and just ended up being a, a, a killer short. So, you know, similar where we watch Moderna bounce around, bounce around, and then when it just couldn't couldn't do anything with this line, again, tries to test it, push down. That That's kind of what I'm looking for is a few different uh, tests of the dark pool. Um, so hopefully that that helps out with the dark pool question. Um, and they, so, yeah, so basically it's like I'm using this spreadsheet to uh, kind of track and then uh, using uh, this other tracker here as well to kind of, uh, you know, 
make sure I have some a one place to. Um, it's a really, really, really nice tool there, Stockington. Really appreciate you uh, putting that together for everyone. And and yeah, no, it's really, really fantastic. So 